Okay, gang, we're starting with number 11. It says, determine whether each equation is a linear equation, write yes or no. If so, write the equation in standard form. So for number 11, um, remember, when we're looking to see if something's a linear equation, we know that our exponents have to be 1, right? Our exponents have to be 1. Now, if you look at this, it might be tempting to say, oh, my exponents are 1. But that means that your exponents are 1 when they're in the numerator, all right? These are in the denominator. So if I were to rewrite this equation with x and y in the numerator, and we haven't really discussed a lot of this with exponents yet, but I would get a negative exponent. And remember, it's got to be positive 1. So pretty much you always want your, your x and your y have to be up in the numerator of whatever you're working on, and they can't be multiplying by each other, and they have to have an exponent of 1. So for number 11, that's just a big old no, because x and y are both in the denominator. And you would see that if you tried to, if you tried to simplify this and you multiplied this whole thing by 3xy to try and get everything out of there, you would wind up having, you know, a term. You'd have 3y plus um, you have 3y plus 3x equals, and it's starting to looking. It's starting to look like, oh, it might work out, right? But then when you get to this last term here, you're only crossing out your three, and you get 2xy. So that's that doesn't work out very nicely, does it? So we don't want that. So that's a big no. All right, number 12, 4x equals 2y. Well, they're both in the, in the numerator, right? That's OK. They both have an exponent of 1, and they're not multiplying by each other. So yeah, yeah, this is linear. Now, if we're going to write it in standard form, remember that's the form ax plus by equals 0. So the big thing is you've got to have x and y on the same side as each other, and then your x needs to be positive. All right, and then they also have to be um, have to be integers. All right, all the all your numbers need to be integers. So four x. So what you're going to do with this four x equals two y is we're going to subtract two y from both sides. When we do that, you get four x minus two y, and then you're left with zero. And believe it or not, zero. Sorry, I wrote this wrong. This should be equal c. All right, zero is your c. Right? So to finish this out, you would have this. Because there's your a, it's a positive integer. There's your b, it's an integer. And then c is, uh, is an integer, and 0 can be treated as an integer in this instance. All right, graph the equation x plus 4y minus 3 equals 0. OK, so for this, for this problem, I think, uh, you know, what I, what I always do is I look at this and I say, okay, is it easier to write this in standard form or in slope-intercept form? Remember, standard is ax plus by equals c. Slope-intercept is y equals mx plus b. I think for this one, it's easiest just to try to write it in standard form. So if I write this in standard form, I got x plus 4y, and I move this negative 3 over to the other side. And that makes it positive, right? So this is my standard form. Now let's use x and y intercepts, all right? Because that's what we use when we have standard form, is use your x and y intercepts. So if, you make, if you're looking for your x-intercept, that means you're making y equal to 0. And when you're looking for your y-intercept, that means you're making x equal to 0. All right, so for my x-intercept, if I make y equal to 0, if I make this equal to 0, I'm left with x equals 3, and there's really not much else to do. For my y-intercept, if I make x equal to 0, so if I make this one equal to 0, I'm left with 4y equals 3. And I just got to simplify that, which means that y is equal to 3 fourths. So now I have two numbers that I can use. So my x-intercept is 3, so I'm going to go over to 3, and I'm going to put a point. And then my y-intercept is 3 fourths, so I'm going to go to about 3 fourths on here. I'm going to put a point, and then you just try to sort of draw a line that's somewhat straight that goes through those. 
put your arrows on the end of it so it looks like a line. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Let's take a look at what we got here. Uh, let's try these last two and then before we stop the video. All right, y equals 2 thirds x. So for this one, um, let's use slope intercept form. All right, so y equals 2 thirds x. So if you use slope intercept form, that's y equals mx plus b. My m is my slope, and then b is my y-intercept. Okay, well, I don't have a y-intercept on this because there's no b. So my y-intercept is zero, so that means it crosses the y-axis at zero. And you always do your y-intercept first. And now take your slope, and if it's positive, it means you go up the amount that's listed there, all right? So I am going to go up to and then you go over three, and but whenever you go over, you're always going over to the right, okay? Over to the right, so up two and over three. So from this point, go up two, then over three. And that gives you a point right here, and then you have this nice line right here. That, oh, that was actually almost straight, so. There you go. That's that one. And now 15 is graphing, but this is a piecewise function. So we're going to just we're going to take a look at this and we're going to we're going to just kind of uh, figure out plug in some numbers and do it that way. All right? So first of all, we're starting for x is less than or equal to 2. So that means anything on this side of the graph basically, and I'll get rid of that line in a second. So if I put 2 into this equation, right this this top one right here if I put 2 in I get 2 times 2 plus 1 so that equals 5 so I get the point 2 5 so I'd go 2 and then go up to 5 and I would put a point right there okay I'm gonna get rid of this line now and then if I put like 0 in because you only need two points if you put 0 in you go that gives you 1 because it zeroes this out right so the point 0 1 so I have a line with a slope of 2 that goes through 1, and you could have done this with slope intercept 2, but we'll just we'll do it this way. It's a little less intimidating. And then the thing is, I actually plotted this wrong because it has to start at this point, and then it goes there. So you actually don't have a line, you have a, you have a ray, okay? Because a ray is defined as uh, it, goes, it goes infinitely in one direction. Right, but only one direction, not both directions. All right, now, for this other part, where this is for all values that are greater than 2. So start with your, your starting value. So if I put 2 in, you have 2 minus 2, all right? That gives you 0. So we'll start at the point 2, 0, and we're going to put an open dot because it doesn't actually include the point 2. It includes everything going down f above 2 going down to that number, all right? So let's just take 4. Let's see what we get. So if I put 4 minus 2 in, I get 2. So I go to the point 4, 2, and I put a point. And so I have another line that's going straight and has a positive slope. But it's, uh, it's starting there. And so then when you look at what your domain and your range are, well, your domain, all right, and it's not asking for it, but case you do get asked, your domain would be all your real numbers, right? So it'd be all real numbers. And your range in this case is, well, it, from this part on, it goes all the way up to positive infinity, right? But from here, it goes all the way down to negative infinity. So you're covering everything as well with your range. So that's all real numbers as well. All right, we're going to stop the vid, and we'll pick it up at the next one.